Hello and welcome, welcome back. Glad to see each and every one of you out there today. This is it. We're looking at the end of Genesis today, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another day, uh, Breaking Bread with Roy. And as always, I am your host, Roy. Just sitting here every day, holding myself accountable and reading the Bible and hoping that maybe if I get lucky, maybe one or two people might follow along on this journey with me. Never know, right? So I... As you guys know, I started this journey to make sure I uh, held myself accountable for reading the Bible, and here we are, we're making it through. On our last episode, I I had uh, made mention that I was going to uh, share something with you, and um, I wanted to make sure to go ahead and start this episode off. Before we got into the reading and finishing of Genesis, I knew I'd have a little bit of, little bit of extra time to... Go ahead and, and, and fill that slot with the two chapters we're going to be able to get through pretty quick. And we'll start we'll start uh, Exodus. I was trying to remember for a minute what the next chapter was, but it, uh, Exodus. <laughs> we'll start Exodus on another episode on another day. We'll start that one tomorrow. And I may even actually have my kids help on that again uh, as we get started going through Exodus. And uh, so they can help out a little at a time on that one. But... One of the things that I, I, I wanted to share, and I found it was very, very, very important, is, is through time, you, you start to realize, and you start to understand, and you've heard me say it a few times, that the more we read the Bible, the more intelligent we become, the more, it's, it's very, very important for us to, to truly become intelligent when it comes to the Bible and understand what the Bible says. And in order to do so, we have to actually read it. And I can remember back when I wasn't a saved man. I can recall the things I thought about the Bible, and I just said it just makes no sense. And I, I now, mind you, I really didn't read much of any of it. I just some of the basic stories and some of the the basic texts I knew from growing up, and I was and I was younger, you know. I mean, I got to that point where I'd heard a few things, and I had been to a few church services, and I thought I knew more than what I did. Uh, so my, my beliefs were based on the very few things that I did not know. Notice I said the things that I did not know because I didn't know a lot and I knew very, very, very little, the very simplest of verses. I only knew those verses because I read them and what I've found out and just so you know, I mean, even though we're here reading Genesis together, I've actually been reading as well other books at the time and not only that, am I reading other books with on my own? I'm, I'm the, the kids are reading different books, and so we're I'm technically doing kind of like four studies, uh, four Bible studies at once. I love it. Um, there's there's I love it because they're so uh, they're so into it, and they and they're they're sticking with it for the most part. They do need a little bit of motivation every once in a while, but uh, the one thing I've learned is is that the more I read. The more I start to understand that Bible, which is which what it's supposed to be, right? You, you really understand what it's about, what it's saying, the meaning of thing, the comprehension, and really truly sit down and start understanding the people, the stories. Not simply, like we just read through, and I'll use this for an example, the, the story of Joseph. And before it was just, you know, simply I remember reading it when I was a, probably a teenager when I really remember reading it. And I just remember, okay, Joseph, his brothers, they sold him into slavery. And I thought, man, what mean guys? And why you know, why would Joseph not be mad about it? When you really sit down and read it like we did this last time, you start to see a lot more. Yes, my mind, is, I'm sure, is a lot, more, uh, a lot more sharper than it used to be. And it's a lot more mature. But I think when you really, truly read things, the Bible really does, it reveals to you the things that you didn't know before. And this journey has really uh, it has really been helping me out and uh, I have never truly I've never sat through and actually read an entire chapter previous to this uh, this little uh, since I started to, uh, decided to make this video I never this journey when I decided to go on it I'd never actually sat down and read a full chapter of the Bible before so 
I really didn't know how it was going to work. I really didn't know what I was going to do. And this is a couple of weeks now of trying to get through. This is a couple of weeks now of trying to get through on Genesis. And here we are. I think we're going to make it. We're going to make it through Genesis. And, uh, you know, four chapters at a time usually. I think uh, I think it's pretty fair. And, and so it's nice when we have these stories that we remember. It's kind of easier. To, you know, it keeps us involved. But I think everything in between, there's a lot more, obviously, that I'm going to have to learn. And maybe the next time I read through Genesis, I'll pick up something else. And I would only imagine because by the time I've read through the Bible, there's there's things that God will tell us and speak to us each and every time. That when we start reading over it again, he's going to speak to us again and add add to the pillar of thoughts that we already have on. So um, I'm, I feel blessed uh, and, and I feel I, I, that I'm just so exciting, excited about doing this. And it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful feeling knowing that you're really starting to understand these things. Um, so I, I really, I say that. I really want to get you. I really want to encourage each and every one of you just to, even if you don't, or even if you sit here and join me, and join me on this journey, and we all hang out and we read the Bible and just, you know, kind of go over what it is what we read. Take some time. Pick a different book. Maybe go in the New Testament, and and just read through that one as well. You can always. There's nothing wrong with reading two books at once, right? So. Um, but I encourage you, I, I encourage you and, and to, to spend some more time. Sometimes you'll miss things if, you know, my reading, I understand is not always the greatest. Uh, and sometimes it, it can be hard to, you know, kind of follow along, especially when we go through uh, genealogy and some of the people, uh, in the book and, uh, but it all has a point. And it all has a purpose. But I would really challenge each and every one of you, just take some time and, and start reading. And, and it's actually a twofold. Um, one, you become a lot more, you become more knowledgeable in the Bible, but you also become a better reader. So uh, I just wanted to share that, you know, something, uh, thoughts that was on my mind there. And uh, before we continued on and finished this uh, Genesis. So if there's anybody who has come and, been joining me on this journey i i thank you i appreciate it um i want to see how far this journey goes how about all the way to revelations so if you like this let me know you know uh, there's anything better i could do um i don't necessarily have a plan uh what book i'm going to read next i might just go straight through genesis exodus leviticus but we could always bounce around first book of, Je of the old testament we could jump to matthew first book of the new testament and then back and forth i doesn't matter to me so if you have any ideas and you if there's anybody out there who's actually following along let me know give me any comments that you'd like and if you'd be so kind as to like this and maybe even if you want to subscribe I'll be always updating new ones, putting on new episodes and reading new chapters and new books. And depending on how many each time, I don't know. It just depends on how much time I have. So so we're going to continue along as we are right now. Just kind of a brief touch up. We, Joseph and all of his family, Pharaoh told Joseph and all of his family, hey, bring the family down, man. We got a place for you. If anybody needs a job, put them in charge of my cattle. He says, bring everybody down. We're good. And uh, at this point in time, Jacob is uh, Jacob's dad. If I remember right, 147, if I'm not mistaken. So he's uh, he's getting close to, he was close to his final days, if I remember that we read that. And 147 years, that's quite a long time. He got to see spent a lot of time with his family. He got to spend a lot of time with the extended family. And so he got to see prosperous times. With those prosperous times, I'm sure it seemed like there came a lot of test and a lot of strenuous times and, and a, lot, a lot of time of worry. And, you know, we know that Jacob was a devoted man to God. So I can only imagine that some of the things that he had felt and some of the things that he had gone through and 
even with before he had the children, even when he was with his brother, with his brother Esau. He, so Jacob spent a lot of time. You know, he he had a long life and he did a lot of things. And so I can only imagine the struggles that he went through. How many years? Uh, I think it was uh, seventeen years. It was only that we that I can actually think about. It was really only about seventeen years. I would. It seems like, and I have to reiterate, it seems like true happiness and that's when he comes to Egypt and all of the family is together 17 years it seemed like he really struggled a lot of his life Jacob and so I think that that could be I think that could be indicative of a lot of Christians I think I'm trying to catch myself trying to go off and, and talk more deeply into that if, if, if I uh you know what I mean, but I there's there's a lot to that, and that is why I know a lot of people that they end up using this. This is a, this is a very important story because I've heard many many different sermons on this, coming at it from different angles. Uh, struggles, and it's always based on struggles, but it's more than that. It's also on about faith, I think so, but uh, I think that that story in and of itself it really can. When you look at it for what it's intended to be, I, I, I really think it has an opportunity to dig deep and just pull you. I think I think it could kind of just pull you out of a little bit of maybe sadness and despair, possibly. It's written, you know, that's that's what God wanted written down, and he wrote that story. God had that story written down for a reason. So... All right, let's get into it. We're chapter 48. We got 48, 49, and 50 left. We're going to finish those off today. Listen, once again, I just want to tell you, if there's anybody out there listening other than myself, I want to say I'm glad that you're with me. So look forward to seeing if you're going to join us for the next book. And I, and I got to be honest with you, I, I am thinking of jumping over to Matthew. So... Let's see what happens. Tell me what you think. Here we go. Uh, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Genesis 48. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened him and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Lutz in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make one of, make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to the seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon. They shall be mine. And they and thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of thy brethren and their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephraim. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. Verse 8. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me all, also thy seed. And Joseph brought them from between his knees, and he bowed, un, he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them unto near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, and who was the youngest, 
and left his hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angels which redeemed me from all evil, blessed the lads, and let thy name be on them, and the land of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon his head, upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become my people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, in thee shall bless, and shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. So, Jacob is, he knows that he's got his last couple of, well, he's on his last. And he sits down and he has Joseph bring his two youngest, Ephraim and Manasseh. Sorry, Manasseh, I believe is pronunciation is and he's given to bless them joseph thinks he made a mistake in blessing ephraim first and joseph said no 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 ephraim is the youngest and J jacob his dad said i know they're both going to be great so he's blessing both of them uh because god gave him god gave him a message that they were going to be both great in the family and, and continue the family name Pardon me. Oh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you, and bring you again into the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. Chapter 49 Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves to together, that I may tell you that which shall befell you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable is water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wantest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to thy couch, to my couch. So it looks like it, I'm not mistaken. I mean, I could be mistaking uh, Jake. This is they say this is Jacob's prophecy and this is a blessing. I'm wondering if this was kind of, uh, kind of like a written prophecy, a written blessing to each and every one of the kids. I'm not positive, but that's kind of how it reads. It almost reads as if it's kind of like a list. Whether it was written down or not, I'm not sure. We'll continue. So that was Reuben. So Simon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O oh my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine out, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man. And in their self-will, they dig down a wall. Cursed be their angry, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. If you recall, they had revenge on somebody that had uh, mistreated somebody that they know. Do you remember that story? We were back there a couple of chapters back. They went and got revenge on some people. They called that the Brothers' Revenge, if you guys remember Simeon and Levi. Do you remember that? I remember that one. It was the way they had something had happened to their sister. We continue. Judah, thou art he whom my brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. 
Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion, whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stopped down. He couched, he couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The, skip, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto, she, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the wine, and his asses colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in his blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell in the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an heaven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heel, so that his rider shall fall backwards. I have waited for thy salvation, Lord. An adder is a type of snake. They have, uh, I, I don't remember all the different types of adder, but I know there's one snake that's called a death adder. Very poisonous snake. So that's what he, uh, he shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, a death adder type of snake. As I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth godly words. Very short about Naphtali and Gad. Not much really to say about a lot of them. Then we get to Joseph. I think he's got a lot to say about Joseph. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hatred him, but his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the Almighty God of Jacob. In quotes, From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Verse 25, Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and in thy Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep unto blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my prognate progenitors, unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of his head of him that was separate from his brethren. Now the next one goes to Benjamin. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour his prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it, that their father spake unto them, and blessed them. Every one according to his blessing, blessing he blessed them. In verse 29, And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan. And if you remember that, uh, we look back, and that was exactly where he had originally buried Rachel, in that field that he had originally purchased. That was where he, he uh, where Rachel was, was buried. The fam I shouldn't say he purchased. The family purchased way back in the day generations back and so that's where he wants to be laid with his fathers which abraham bought with the field of ebran and the hill of for a possession of a burying place so they specifically bought it for that there they buried abraham and sarah his wife i said rachel but i meant rebecca there they buried abraham and sarah his wife there they buried isaac and rebecca his wife and there i buried leah the purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghosts. And he was gathered unto his people. He had passed. Uh, verse chapter. I do that verse again. Sorry, I've got to adjust 
Remember, I do read directly from the Bible, so i got to make adjustments on this one to light hitting it. I'm going to work on that and get better at that. And Joseph fell upon his face, uh, fell upon his father's face, and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded the servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were filled, fulfilled for him, and for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. So three score, every score is twenty. So three score is sixty and ten days would be seventy. They mourned for him for seventy days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak. I pray you in the years of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in the grave which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There thou shalt bury me. Now therefore let me go, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. So he's basically saying to the Pharaoh, If I have ever been in your good graces, please, my dad wants to be buried here. Let me go and take him and bury him, and I will be back. And Pharaoh said, Go up. And bury thy father according to he may, according as he made thee swear. In other words, as how he made you promise, go ahead and bury him there. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and went with him all the servants of Pharaoh. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, let me back that up. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph and his brethren, and his father's house. Only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. Everybody. A lot of people, it sounds like a lot of people went. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the highest threshing floor at Etid, and which is beyond Jordan, and where they mourned with a great and very sore lamentations. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the, flower, in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according to as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought for the field of possessions of a burying place of Ephron the Hittite before memory. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. So everybody went, all the people that went, buried, they buried Jacob with his fathers in the cave where he, his, his descendants were. And then they went back. He said, just as they said, he said, we will go back. And they went back to Egypt. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did to him. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been a long time since they got reunited. And now the brothers are worried. Well, now that dad's dead, is Joseph going to hate us now? <laughs> I'm wondering how long they've been holding on to this fear. That's kind of a, that's got to be kind of exhausting, I would have imagined. It's not as though that they were suddenly dead, or I, I, he, he, I mean, suddenly dead, but suddenly fearing him. I think they always feared him. But now that dad's gone, are they really this scared? I mean, they are, obviously. It just the Bible just said it. And they sent a messenger unto Jake, Joseph saying, The father did command before he died, saying, You shall say unto Joseph, Forgive. <laughs> Remember, he makes a very point, he makes a very specific point to say, You, sh you shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive. <laughs> I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sins, for they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, Forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And the brethren and, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. <laughs> it 
that's it's uh, it's not funny. It's just uh, it's very it's it's weird. I I wonder if there was a lack of trust in Joseph. I don't know. I don't know if there was a reason for it. I I can only just say it, it feels like there was a lack of trust that suddenly. I don't know if they could see his heart. I don't know if they could feel that he was genuine. Not to say that anybody was doing anything wrong. That's just the way I kind of look into it. I, I, I just, I put this thought into it and I'm thinking, did they not trust their brother? Was there something in their hearts that maybe it's their guilt? I and mean, that's the, that's where I come along with. And I come to that conclusion that their guilt has truly held them back. And they, they, they're scared that Joseph, oh, dad's dead. Now Joseph is really going to give us whatnot for what we did to him so many years ago. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones, and be comforted. And he spake kindly unto them. <laughs> he said, guys, I, I mean, and I, I can only imagine in his head, and I, guys, I already told you, this is what God meant for me. I remind, and so he had to remind them, guys, this is what God meant for me. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children on the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up unto Joseph's knees. So Joseph's had a couple of generations by now. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of the land unto the land, unto the land which he sware unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and he shall carry you up to my bones from hence. And the last verse of Genesis says, So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. A hundred and ten years old. So we look at that, and, the, and Genesis ends up with a really nice and wonderful story. And that story being, obviously, of Joseph and and I think back, and we look at this, and we look at how long Joseph was in Egypt. And if I remember correctly, when he when the first years of the famine started, if I'm not mistaken, I look back, and he was 30 years old. 30 years old. So he spent a lot of time headship of Egypt. There's nothing saying that he ever stepped down of headship. He was always in headship of Egypt. Uh, so... If he was 30 years old and he lived to be 110, so let's do the math, right? So uh, that's 80 years that he was in headship um, and still lived there in Egypt. So he lived out his days 80 years. And Joseph went through a lot to get to that point. A lot of questions in his head. A lot of things happened just, you know, as we read through the we read through the story, and then there's got to be more things that happened. It's not as though they accounted every year of his life. I mean, you know, I mean, there's got to be things that have happened throughout the years that they just didn't take account. But those were those were the most significant uh, of events, and those were significant th things that, well, God knew exactly what He wanted to put in the Bible, right? So, eighty years, and he passed on. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, we got through it. And uh, if there's anybody out there listening, thank you for following along. We got through Genesis quite well. So I think this is where I'm going to head it off. Uh, not I think, but for sure, this is where we'll, we'll close it out. Uh, we'll finish off with a good start. Uh, we're going to continue on another book. It's either going to be uh, Exodus or the first book of the New Testament will be Matthew. I look forward to starting the new book tomorrow i'll make a decision i'm going to pray on it i think that's always the best option don't forget not only should we spend time reading but make sure you're spending time with god just find a quiet time a place where you can be uninterrupted and just pray just pray and just talk to god praise him worship him 
and uh, truly, truly give him the credit and give him the love and the respect that he deserves, has earned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for your mercy, your grace, your glory, and your wonder, and most of all for your forgiveness and, and for dying on the cross for us, Father. You, you've taken into account so much of life and stories in the Bible that we can we can feed off of and we can use these stories to uh, to to encourage our minds and to strengthen our minds and with lessons in each and every book of the Bible and each and every chapter in the Bible there's something there Lord I pray that each and every one of us would take this opportunity and and continue to read so that we continue to be uh, just continue to become smarter and a lot more educated and really truly understand the Bible and get that opportunity to just know your word and in doing so lord father god that we we would be able to get closer to you that we would understand what it is to 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 be closer to you and be more like you and be the christians that you want us to be not the christians that we think we should be unless we're thinking that we need to be as like you as possible it's, it's a it's a hard task father we're going to we're going to keep trying, and I pray that each and every one of us, Father, would have the motivation, and, and I pray that you would give each and every one of us the motivation, Heavenly Father. I ask you be with each and every single one of us. Your will, Father, your will be done. In your name, amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining me, and I look forward to starting a new book. One down, 65 more to go, correct? All right, everybody, uh, until next time, God bless.